So let's talk about image and object profiles. And 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 you know, before I mentioned that we had this uh, that we had this um, uh, relationship, or Steve showed you the relationship uh, in that diagram between the different color spaces. But the profiles are really how we identify them, and these are critical. And it's understanding how this works is important background information. Um, uh, for you as you try to make sure that you can, in um, fact, uh, meet the expectations of what you think you're going to be putting out versus what you're getting. So what about profiles? What is that really? What is it? What are profiles? What are they? What do they mean? Why do we have them, et cetera? So if you look in the middle of this uh, uh, diagram here in this this illustration, you see that same diagram that that we sh that Steve showed before, that, that elliptical uh, looking uh, diagram, which shows kind of the, the color space. And in this case, it's what we're calling a, uh, a translation color space or the common color space, um, which is uh, a, a, an LAB space. Um, and, I, and we're not going to get into, into great technical detail on that because it's, it's not that much, it's not that important other than to know that it's a fairly wide space so that we can make this transfer that we're talking about. Now, every device that you use whether it's a monitor or a digital camera, a scanner, printers, inkjet printers, CMYK printers, each one of them has characteristics. You know, we think of uh, CMYK as being uh, the same CMYK across everything, but I can tell you right now that if you were to look at the, at the CMYK ink in an inkjet printer or a CMYK ink that's coming off of a, an offset press or a toner-based press, um, you're going to notice that the cyan is different, the magentas are different, the yellows are different. And if we move to a monitor or a digital camera, we're, we're starting to deal with things like RGB, you're going to notice that even the RGB on the monitor is going to be different than the RGB in the digital camera or in the scanner. So each of these devices has its own color characteristics. And these characteristics are very important, but they are when we understand what these characteristics are, um, we can create what is known as a profile and they're device profiles. So for example, every printer has its own device profile. Uh, every scanner has a device profile. A digital camera has a device profile. There are also standardized profiles as well that we use to try to simulate um, a, a, a standardized space. But in terms of color accuracy, each device is different. And by the way, you could have two inkjet printers from the same manufacturer, same models, and if you were to characterize them and actually look at how they represent color coming off of the printers, you may see that there's a difference. So it becomes very important to, uh, to understand that and that concept as we start to look at um, color reproduction. As a matter of fact, one of the other things that, uh, you know, when you buy an inkjet printer or you buy a, a, a toner printer or, or, uh, or, or work with even uh, uh, some standardized uh, kinds of colors, you're going to find that, um, that those printers usually come with a profile. They'll come with a profile that you can use in your workflow. And we're going to look at workflows in a little bit, but you can use those profiles in your workflow. But if you're really going to be critical about it, you may have to do an actual uh, um, characterization of that printer that you have. And by the way, we talk about the fifth color and the fifth color being the media. That actually plays a role as well. So, for example, if I've got an inkjet printer and I'm putting in one kind of media, one kind of paper or, or fabric or depending on what my application is, um, and then I put in a different one, the characteristics of that device actually shift, which means that the profile needs to shift as well. So that's very important information um, as we go forward, and that concept uh, is important. So the common color space is really the space that we use to translate between the different devices. So for example, if I want to translate the information that I have on this monitor that I'm seeing on the monitor to that inkjet printer so that I know that I'm seeing the same thing or I'm reproducing what I'm seeing, it goes through that CIE, that, that lab space, the common color space. So now let's talk about 
the practical application of this, okay? And, and, and this is really where kind of the rubber meets the road, if you will. Um, so we've got, uh, many of you probably have heard the term PDFX 1A. Well, first of all, PDFX, if you've been, if you, if you listened in on the, uh, on the PDFs uh, webinar that was given on uh, the Gantt Work Group site, and if you haven't, you should. Uh, that really is uh, designed as an international standard. PDFX is designed as an international standard for um, the uh, transfer, uh, the blind transfer of files um, between um, recipients, between a, a creator and a producer. Um, and PDFX 1A was one of the earlier uh, standards, and it was based on um, CMYK um, processing. And it was very, and actually, it was really designed around publication print, which is one of the reasons why um, it was uh, CMYK. Um, and, and, you know, basically what you had, you had an RGB image, um, it went in, you placed it in a layout, um, and uh, you were able to select the, based on, on, uh, on um, what kind of media you were going to use, um, a, uh, a profile, uh, and a way to, to translate that, and it went then off to the press. Now, that CMYK <clears throat> is great, but as I said before, CMYK is really different and can be different based on the devices. And as we get more involved in digital print, uh, whether it be toner and or inkjet, um, it's the, 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 the model, the CMYK model, um, is a little bit more stringent and not as flexible as it needs to be. Right. And I think, really what, so, so Dale, I think a key to, for those of you who might be thinking PDFX 1A did not support transparency, just to, to put it, you know, we'll talk a little bit about that more, but PDFX 1A does not support transparency. Right. Absolutely. Uh, and it's a very limited, sp it's a limited space, uh, which is one of the reasons why PDFX4 um, was developed as a standard. And, and, um, and one of the things that, uh, again, if you're not familiar, that familiar with the Gantt Work Group, you, you should know that we actually create standardized files. And we'll talk more about those later to help you get some of this stuff set up. So it's not like you have to go back, remember everything that we're telling you here, and then go back through the settings and set them up. But Understand that PDFX4 is a much more flexible format. Um, it is really the format of today. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, just about every RIP that's been manufactured over the last, oh gosh, probably 10 years uh, supports PDFX4 or should, um, and, uh, and, and is much more uh, reasonable. Um, PDFX6, which is something that you shouldn't really, uh, you shouldn't really be that, uh, you shouldn't really be focusing on other than to know it's coming down the line. It's something that you're going to be hearing a little bit about and you're going to be seeing um, is really in the standards committee um, uh, right now. It's in ISO. Um, we're working with uh, um, finalizing PDFX6, but even after ISO finalizes it, you won't start to see PDFX6 in your applications, uh, supporting the RIPs, uh, probably for at least another year or more. So PDFX4 is really the, uh, the, 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 the format of uh, today and, and for sure the short-term future. So if you're a creator, and I, I don't know, you know, in, in the, uh, in the uh, group that's listening in today, um, if you're a creator, um, this is kind of a, a, a diagram that helps you determine, okay, so what's the best thing I can do? Should I be using PDFX uh, for uh, 1A? Should I be using uh, um, uh, um, PDFX 4? And in the case, when we're talking about it with the GEM group, work, with the GEM work group, when we talk about PDFX um, uh, 1A, we're really talking about um, the uh, the GWG 1v4, which is uh, really based around that. And if we're starting to talk about um, PDFX4, we're talking about what we call GD, GWG 2015. Um, and and again, uh, just know that 2015 is the is the latest release we have because there haven't been a lot of changes, so we didn't need to do that. We're in the process of releasing a uh, a uh, new set of specifications. 
and you can expect those uh, sometime uh, early 2021.